Hello, Marlins fans, and welcome to this edition of Big Fish Small Pod for Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. And if you are new to the Small Pod, here we like to give you all the information about the Marlins for that particular day all season long in 10 minutes or less. And Marlins fans, as always, Big Fish Small Pod is presented by MPT College Consulting. Contact them today at mptcollegeconsulting.com for all your college consulting needs. Marlins fans, the fish are coming off a 4-3 to three loss against the San Francisco Giants in what was just a heart-wrenching loss to San Francisco. After Marlins did get off to an early 3-0 lead, Edward Cabrera coming back to his first start of the year and looked incredible. We will get to that very soon, but of course we do have to talk about what happened before that game, and that is Max Meyer being optioned down to AAA with Eric Cabrera, of course, being a corresponding move. Um, we've talked to this on FOF Live, on Twitter, Spaces, all that jazz, but we have to also discuss it here on Big Fish Small Pies. This is the big news going around in the Mormons franchise putting down Max Meyer to AAA, not the move I would have done. I, I myself don't like this move. I can Maybe I can kind of understand it where Peter Bennett is coming from, but just the way Max Meyer has performed so far this season, I don't think it does any just or justice to put him down to AAA. Just how well he's been performing. He's usually been the best pitcher for the Marlins this season, going to just above a 2.10. ERA, the only pitcher the Marlins have had, um, at least so far, um, prior to tonight. Um, last night, going six innings, Max Meyer has done it twice and has easily been the best pitcher for the Marlins this season, um, pitching very well. But it just, again, it just seems like they want to limit his innings. They don't want him to go out there and potentially get injured in what may already have been a lost season for the Marlins. Just very difficult um, to just think about how the Marlins are going to use their pitchers now. Just Max Meyer, again, he's only 25. It's not like when the Marlins did this with Yuri just a season ago and just putting him in AAA, optioning him. Right after the All-Star break, um, it really caused a lot of tension uh, with Marlins fans, um, with Kim Ang. But it was understandable just because he was so young, 20 years old. And then look what happened to him, what led up to Yuri Perez, him now getting um, Tommy John surgery, sadly. But with Max Meyer, again, I'm not really in favor of this move. I could kind of understand it. Um, I think it's might be doing a disservice to the fans. Uh, it seems in a way that you know what you have with Max Meyer currently, but again, to do this so early into the year, I don't believe we are close to 20 games yet into the season. And to have your easily best pitcher so far this season to put him down to triple a um, to me, I believe makes very little to no sense. Um, really towards Max Meyer and, and what he's brought to the fish so far. Easily, again, best pitcher. Looks incredible. Um, for sure, fire starter for the Marlins now. Easily could be a potential number two, three guy for the Marlins. Just very incredible the way he's been performing, Max Meyer. But again, for Max Meyer, his incredible performance to start the season. To talk about another incredible performance we saw last night with Edward Cabrera. Six innings, five hits. One earned run, and here's the kicker. Here is the best part of his start. Ten strikeouts to only one walk. An incredible performance from Eric Cabrera. This is the Eric Cabrera that we have been praising since he was a prospect as a future, as a future ace, as almost Sandy 2.0, as one of the top prospects, not just in the Marlins system at the time, but all of baseball, especially pitching-wise. Nasty stuff. The Nat probably has the nastiest stuff in all of the Marlins franchise. Uh, easily pitching, pitching wise, just really incredible from Eric Cabrera getting that start. Uh, 
finally now putting him in there in the rotation. Again, I would not have made him come up for Max Meyer. You could have easily optioned down AJ Puck, who has options left and has not been doing well as a starter, and you could put him down to AAA if you do feel like AJ Puck is the starter, is going to be a starter long-term for the Fish, or at least for the rest of this year. But again, you could have also gone to a six-man rotation and bring down guys like Birch Smith, um, other players like that, maybe even Andrew Nardi, because we will get into his performance and really his struggles to start the year. Um, but again, you're looking at it here. Uh, Marlins faced off against the Giants, and easily it started off very well for the Fish, um, getting off to a hot start. Who else? But Avisael Garcia with the home run, his second of the year in the bottom of the second. And not soon after that, Brian De La Cruz hit a very nice double to left field, um, bringing in Luis Arise. And Otto Lopez, yes, that name may not sound familiar, but he is the, the corresponding move for the Jake Berger oblique strain injury that put him to the 10-day IL. Um, Otto Lopez has just been tearing up um, the minors since he was um, waived by the Giants not so long ago, but very well performance also by Otto Lopez, getting himself a hit. He did strike out twice, but really to come out there and get his taste in the majors with the Marlins, who played very decently, I would say, so especially um, in the hot corner. But really great performance by Vicel Garcia. Luis Rise again, is getting his average up, slumping the beginning of the season. We were wondering when is Luis Rise going to show up again that we know that go up there easily 300 hitter again, hit another three hit performance last night, but uh, the, the struggles really continued for the Marlins going into the seventh inning um, just with their bullpen. Their bullpen has been so taxed as of late, just because the amount of innings they have eaten, they don't have an innings eater like Sandy seven, eight, even a nine inning get, spare the bullpen when Sandy starts, but now when guys are giving you four, five, four and two thirds, maybe sometimes if a pitcher's having a bad day, three innings, really taxing on the bullpen. And it's really shown yet last night. George Soriano has not looked good at all this season. Again, giving up three earned runs, a hit. He walked two batters and not strike out anyone. George Soriano has not looked well at all so far to start the year. And again, after Soriano, Andrew Nardi, a uh, combined Soriano and Nardi only lasted one inning, giving up three earned runs each, three hits. They have a combined 22 ERA between them. This is not the same pitchers that we saw last season that we were praising the entire year of the year. There were points where George Soriano was just lights out. Again, some of it might have been in, 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 in blowouts, Marlins have a high lead or they're they're getting blown out or or later on in the year he he better situations for George Soriano and he fared very well. Definitely earned him spot um on this year's roster with his performance last season. And Andrew Nardi was, you could say, easily the best bullpen arm the Marlins had not named Tanner Scott. And there were high hopes for Andrew Nardi, even as a guy that could potentially be an all-star for the Marlins, especially in that bullpen role, the way they've been performing. Andrew Nardi has not been good at all this season. His velocity has not been the same. It feels like in every outing he has, his velocity just keeps getting lower and lower. It, it goes lower than, than we've seen at the prior time. And with Nardi, it just seems like he needs, I don't want to say a fresh start, not at all, but maybe going down to AAA will be the best suit for him. Go out there, get a couple innings, couple games, really refreshing his mind, everything that needs to go with it so he can get back to where he needs to be um, as, as a main piece of this bullpen. Because when Andrew Nardi's on, he's easily one of the best bullpen arms, not just on the team, but you can even say the entirety of the National League really going on to last season. Um, but again, the Marlins could not get anything going. Um, besides those three runs in the bottom of the second inning, just giving up hit after hit really got knocked around in that seventh inning. Um, Brian Hoeing did come in, had two innings in relief, two strikeouts, one walk. Brian Hoeing has easily been the best bullpen arm this year, um, close to already 10, 11 innings pitched for Brian Hoeing. Um, getting up there than most of the Marlins starters. Brian Hoeing has easily been the best bullpen arm this season, which I don't know if – 
thinking about it coming into this year. If we wanted Brian Hong to be the best bullpen arm or are these going to the most innings? If I would have told you that at the beginning of the year, I would have said this is the season's already fallen off the rails. And right now, standing at only three wins, 14 losses, things are looking rough for the Marlins. Hope is slowly fading away, especially with Max Meyer being options. The Marlins have to turn things around and quick if they want to salvage anything from this season. But that's going to do it for me, for Big Fish Small Pod. As always, we are presented by MPT College Consulting. Check them out, mptcollegeconsulting.com. And always, even at 3-14, and 14, go fish.